Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, 10 a.m. in Australia and 1 a.m. in the UK. I hope you guys are well and you had a good weekend. Uh, just to bring everybody up to speed on what we're working on, um, we're creating an Art Deco building, interior and exterior that we're going to be um, putting together in the Unreal Engine 4.15.1. Uh, it's an, Unreal, an Art Deco building I created in UDK in 2011. We're going to be recreating it now in um, the new Unreal Engine. Let's uh, start just again for the benefit of anyone maybe new to the channel. Uh, at looking at the video I created back in 2011. I'm just going to move, skip forward through some concept art at the beginning. So this is the building we are recreating in Unreal Engine 4.15. Uh, this was done in UDK back in 2011. So what we're doing is we're updating the assets for this building uh, to make them uh, a little higher poly and just to uh, update the textures for some of them. We're doing that in 3D Studio Max. Uh, then we're going to be taking those assets into the Unreal Engine as we work on them so that we can rebuild this um, building in the new Unreal Engine 4. Because I'm interested to see the uh, changes that Epic have made in lighting between six years ago in the UDK and today in Unreal Engine 4. Because UDK was Unreal Engine 3. That's what we're working on. This is the building we're going to be recreating and these are the assets that we are going to be working on. We've um, done a few of them. A few of the assets uh, have been done. There's just a few left to do before we can start rebuilding the uh, building in UDK. Uh, in Unreal. Um, and then we're going to create a cinematic in Unreal as well. A fly through like you see here that was done in UDK. Um, also the difference I think between this version and the one that we're going to create in uh, Unreal 4 this building was just sitting on a checkered plane and I think we'll create a proper um, uh, environment for the building so we'll put it in a landscape and uh, add grass and trees and all that type of thing just to make the uh, cinematic look a bit more interesting. So again this is the building that we're, we're making we're going to be remaking in uh, Unreal Engine 4. This is the one that was created in UDK six years ago. We'll, uh, and like I said, we'll recreate a cinematic fly through like we see here in this video. But like you can see here when it pulls out of the building, this building is just sitting on a uh, checkered floor. There is no environment. We'll probably end up creating an environment for the building uh, in Unreal Engine 4 when we, re when we remake it. So that's what we're working on. Let's jump into Max. Uh, just quickly before we jump into Max, we'll jump into uh, Unreal Engine. Last week we were working on these uh, doors. One is for the side and one is for the front. So there's um, in that building there are two side doors and a front and a back door. So I wanted uh, the doors to be a little different between the two. So these are the side doors here and this is the front and back door. This is just a... Uh, uh, a uh, railing section that separates the upper floor from the lower floor that you saw during the fly through. It's above the stairwell. So as we've been making our assets and updating them, we've been bringing them into the Unreal Engine here. Um, we've been creating blueprints for the different parts of the um, of the models that contain different sections of models. So what I mean here is, let's take this um, this railing section. These are uh, are made up of all different um, assets that have been duplicated or instanced in the engine and I've done that to save on polygon count and memory. So for instance these uh, wooden urns, it's only read into memory once and then we duplicate it around so that the uh, we can save on poly counts and memory. The same with these uh, wrought iron sections here on the, on the railings. They're only created once, one small section and then we copy it around the outside. Once we've done that, we can select all of the objects and create a blueprint for it, which is this one here. And that allows us to easily drag the uh, completed setup object into our level when we want to start making it. And again, I'm keeping everything organized in my editor here to make binding and setting up the building as easy as possible. 
Right, let's jump back into 3D Studio Max. And we've got to find a um, an asset to work on next. Let's see. Some of these we've already done. And again, I line all of my assets up in a row that are for the interior of the building. That's so I can easily see what I have to uh, export for the Unreal Engine and make sure I don't accidentally forget something. Um, we've worked on all the lights except for this main chandelier. We won't be doing that today. We'll do that at some stage. It's just it's quite a detailed piece of geometry, so we'll wait a little bit to do that. We'll get the others uh, done first. These are just floor sections for inside the building. <coughs> Pardon me. These are the door sections we worked on last week. And a couple of more railing sections for inside the building. Um, we may end up... I may work on those today. Either that or, or we might try and get some of these pieces done that I'm not changing the textures on. Um, but I do want to change the uh, colour of the texture to better match the cherry wood we're using now. So this column piece, which just goes into the corners of the uh, interior of the rooms, I probably won't change the mesh or the uh, texture, but I will change the colour of the texture. So it's going to get Max to lock on that for me. Uh, and again, remember guys, if you have any questions or anything you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Um, a bit of background on myself. I work in uh, architectural visualization now. I've worked for games companies in the past and I've also done some film and cinema work. Um, I've been in 3D for more than 10 years, so if you have a question that, about 3D that you you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. It doesn't have to, have to be about 3D Studio Max. Uh, it can be about any 3D software or any 3D related question or art related question. Um, if I can help, I'm quite happy to. If you just want to pop into chat and say hello, then that's always welcome. If you just want to watch, that's completely fine too. So let's look at this um, column piece that goes into the corners of the rooms. Like I said, I'm not going to change the uh, mesh or the texture itself, but I'm going to change the color of the texture to better match that um, cherry wood color we're using now for the banister. And it's just a, a sort of a slightly reddish uh, wood that we're that we've created. Now this texture work has been done in um, Substance Painter. Uh, I generally will use um, Mari, which is my preferred 3D paint program, or Substance Painter for this type of thing wood textures and things like that, uh, physically based materials, Substance Painter does that quite well. Anything I want to get a bit more control over or have a bit more art, uh, an artistic look to, I'll take into Mari to paint by hand. Uh, that and Mari can, uh, that and the fact that Mari you can use very large uh, texture sizes as opposed to Substance Painter, where you're limited to uh, 8K textures, which is generally big enough for a games engine, but if you're doing cinema work, I'll use Mari because you can create really large texture sizes. So we want to change the color of our, our uh, some of our wooden pieces to better match this red. So let's look at doing that, I think. Let's uh, open up the material editor. Let's give Max a minute to think about that. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna use my picker here to find that texture in my materials. And it is this one here. And this one's called uh, Featured Column Underscore Text, TGA. Now I'm saving all of my textures as PNG that I'm bringing into Unreal. Uh, generally I prefer to work in uh, Targa, TGA, simply because if you're working in a studio environment um, and you have to swap assets between different studios or different departments, generally they prefer you work in Targa or TIFF. Uh, again, because they're both lossless, so you won't lose any color information. Uh, as opposed to JPEG, don't work in JPEG. M not in the studio anyway. Um, but for the engine, we're going to be using PNG. Because uh, Unreal handles PNG quite quite well, and we don't have to swap our assets with another department, so we'll stick to PNG. So it's uh, featured column underscore text. I'm going to open up Photoshop. And we're going to change the color of that texture. going to be a little bit of trial and, and error here because um, 
we have to guess the colour and bring it into the Unreal Engine to match it, make sure it matches correctly. Let's open up that texture though. I'm just going to, um, before I do that, it's covering up my chat, so I'm going to change it to change my layout here so I can see what's going on. There we go. When I, I work on two monitors, so I generally have all of these panels on my second monitor, um, but that won't help you guys because you can't see them. So, but uh, I'm a big fan of dual monitors. Uh, I, I used to work with a three monitor setup, but I found uh, generally I, I would end up ignoring the third monitor. So I generally stick to two now. I find that works well for me. Uh, featured column is what we're looking for. I think it's this one here. This is the texture we're using for that column, and the texture itself is not very large. It's 128 wide by 512 high. Again, um, these textures are very small because this was originally created for UDK. Uh, we could go bigger on these textures now. We probably won't for this column. That should work for us okay, I think. But we do have to change the color. So before I do that, I'm going to duplicate the underlying texture. So if I make a mistake, I can just uh, delete that layer. And now we're going to do a bit of color correction. So I'm going to go in and do a color balance. And I want to pull up on the red. Don't go too extreme at this stage either. I'm going to pull back a bit on the uh, yellow. And pull up a little on the magenta. Now that's in the mid tones. Let's do it in the shadows now. up a little bit on the red, pull back a little bit on the yellow and pull up a little bit in the magenta. And now to the highlights. Up a bit on the red, pull in a bit more of the blue and a bit more in the magenta. So we go from our color corrected to our original here. The original is a lot more of a yellow wood. The color corrected is more of that cherry red wood. Let's save this uh, file out now as a PNG. Um, we'll call it feature column underscore color, I think. Let's jump back into Max. And let's swap out this texture for the one that we just did some color correction on. And so now we're going to have to take it into Unreal and uh, check the color matches the banister. So we'll do that quickly and then we may have to jump back into Photoshop probably to, to do some tweaks on it. Now I'm just going to make sure that um, my mesh here is connected because we've had a problem with some of the meshes being the, the verts have been split. So I'm going to check that just by going into my modify tab into sub object mode. And I know if I can select a whole face like that, that uh, it's correct. It, it, it is welded together correctly. So that should be fine. Um, we're just going to call this one feature column. I'm going to copy the name and we're going to export the uh, object export selected as an FBX file for Unreal. Let's get my directory right here. I'm going to create a separate folder for that asset so that everything is nice and organized and if I have to come back to it, I can find it much more easily and quickly. I'll save it as feature column. And again, um, I've just created a, a preset here called Painted UE4. And all that is, is uh, I have smoothing groups enabled, triangulate enabled, and preserve edge orientation enabled. So we'll go OK and export that model. Uh, actually, before I do that though, I do want to throw down a reset X form. This is just for my benefit to make sure everything will uh, look correct when we bring it into Unreal. Uh, if your if your X if your model's axis has been um, moved in any way and you don't do a reset X form, when you bring the asset into Unreal or the prop, whatever you want to call it, 
I tend to call them assets, a lot of people call them props, um, into the Unreal Engine, your model's going to come in or center, like it may be rotated. So doing a reset X form will just uh, fix any problems that you might have like that. Let's collapse our stack here. And while we're here, let's jump into our hierarchy tab and affect pivot only. And I think we're going to move the pivot to, we'll move it to the bottom edge. So we'll center it to the column, move it to the bottom edge. That'll make placing it inside the building uh, easier than having it in the middle here. So I'm going to start by centering it to the object. I'm going to jump into my uh, front viewport and I'm just going to move that pivot down to the base. That should be good. Jump back into our orthographic, turn off effect pivot and let's re-export the model. I'm calling it feature column. Yes, we want to overwrite. And again, we're just keeping smoothing groups, triangulate and preserve edge orientation selected. Hey, and Jim, thank you for the host. I appreciate that. That's very good of you. How's things? Haven't seen you for a while. All right, so we've exported our model here. Let's uh, jump into the Unreal Engine and... Um, no, thank you, thank you. I, I do appreciate it, guys, when you host my channel. It's very good of you, so thank you. Uh, there's a few of you guys that do it for me, and I, like I said, I, I really do appreciate it. I, I must look at that part of my channel as well. I am making an Art Deco building that was made, uh, I made this building six years ago in 2011 using the UDK and we're going to be remaking it now using Unreal Engine 4. Uh, let me just jump back a bit. This is the building that I made uh, using the UDK. We're going to be remaking this Art Deco building in um, Unreal Engine 4. So we're doing the exterior and the interior and uh, we're also going to be creating a cinematic fly through like you see here using the new engine. And I'm also going to place the building inside it in a, an actual uh, landscape environment. Thank you, Anne Jim. Uh, again, though, this, this version was done six years ago, so the uh, the new version should look a lot better because the new engine, the lighting has been improved a lot by Epic Games because this was using Unreal Engine 3. We're remaking it now to use Unreal Engine 4. So the lighting will uh, hopefully be improved quite a bit from this version. And that's one of the reasons I'm remaking it because I'm keen to see um, the differences in the lighting and I also want to update some of the assets to make them a bit higher poly and change some of the textures on them, which is what we're doing now. Uh, Andrew says that, that he likes the Unreal Engine Pro, it does look realistic, it does, yeah I agree. The, the lighting in the new engine is quite amazing. Uh, I was saying to the guys last week on, on the channel that um, it's getting to a stage now where the big rendering engines should start to be worried people like V-Ray, Maxwell, uh, Mental Ray, those type of people, because these real-time engines are getting very good now. The, the quality that uh, you're getting out of them is, is quite amazing. Now the graphics cards are much more powerful. It's uh, really allowing people to swap out using a real-time 3D engine as opposed to rendering out still images and animations like they used to in 3D programs. Like I, I work for an, an ArchBiz studio and we still use V-Ray as our main renderer. Um, I'm trying to talk them into using the Unreal Engine more though. I think that we could uh, get some stuff done for clients that the clients would really like using a real-time engine. You're liking the lighting? Oh, thanks, but this lighting, like I said, was done back six years ago, so hopefully the new uh, engine, we can get some nicer lighting happening when we remake the building. That's what we're going to be doing. And, and again, we're going to be putting it in a, a, in, a, uh, a veg with, in a landscape with vegetation because this version was just sitting on a checkered floor, so hopefully we'll make the new one look a bit prettier. But we're going to have um, vegetation moving in the wind like we are here in the new engine. So, and at the moment we're going through our assets in uh, Unreal, the ones that we're using for that interior of that building, and just I'm just updating them to take advantage of uh, I'm making some of them a little higher poly and um, changing out some of the textures on some of them because I don't like the textures I used on a few of them. 
So let's bring that column into the Unreal Engine. And it's called Feature Column. Remember, we, we're changing the texture on that column because we changed, when we remade this um, banister section, we changed the color to a cherry wood from a yellow wood. So we have to match that to this now. I'm using 3D Studio Max Engine to do my modeling. Uh, all 3D programs are good now. And like I said, guys, if, if you want a free 3D program, Blender is completely free and it's very good. If you're a student or a teacher, you can uh, get the, you can use the educational version of 3D Studio Max. They give that to you for free. Uh, you have to be a student though, or a teacher. Um, but it's completely free and it's the, there's no restrictions on Max. It's uh, exactly the same version that studios are using. So, but if, you, if, if you're not a, a student or a teacher, then uh, you can download Blender for free. You don't have to pay for 3D software. Let's just import that column. Give uh, Unreal a minute here to convert, to load up the texture. You know, open up that mesh asset that we just exported. Now remember, this has no um, normal map or anything yet. And I'm also seeing that this looks like it's turned inside out. I'm just going to double check. It looks like the normals have flipped uh, incorrectly. You can see how we can see the inside of the model and the normals aren't correct. So we're going to fix that now. Um, but yeah, I, I use Max simply because uh, I've been using 3D Studio Max for more than 10 years now and because I've been doing 3D for more than 10 years. That's what I'm used to using. All the uh, ArchBiz studios generally will use Max. Um, when I worked in the game studios, they used Max and Maya. A lot of the animators like to use Maya. You're liking the background? Are you talking about my, my screen background here? Yeah, 10 years, it's been a while. You're talking about this background, I'm assuming? My, these leaves with these blue blobs on it. Uh, yeah, no, I've been using, I've been in 3D for more than 10 years. Uh, doing stuff, I've worked for a couple of games companies. Um, I've done some film, cinema work. And uh, now I work in Arch Archbiz. I, my specialization now is photogrammetry. I'll, I'll show you guys that at some stage as well on stream. How I do photogrammetry because it's a really useful tool to have if you're a 3D artist. Um, a lot of people think photogrammetry though, you can just take your photos, create your model and it's done. It's not that simple. There's a lot of cleanup work still needed. It's like motion capture for animation. You still gotta do a lot of cleanup. What game companies have I worked for? Uh, I've, I've worked for game studios in the country I'm in here. So I've, I've done work for um, done some work for Epic, but that was a long time ago. I've done work, I used to work for um, company, THQ, um, and now I work in Archbiz, and, and cinema work, I've done work for Warner Brothers games and for Fox, uh, 20th Century Fox Studios as well, both games and film. Uh, most of my work now though, like I said, is in Archbiz. I do, my specialization is we do a, the studio I work for does a lot of um, heritage work. So I do the heritage side of that business. So the architects will create a, um, a an extension for, an, for a heritage building, say that they want to put onto the back of it, a modern extension. So we, we recreate the, um, the heritage part of the building then the architects work on incorporating the new extension into the heritage part of the building. And I use photogrammetry usually for that. So I do a lot of um, you know, old stone work and that type of thing in my day-to-day. My -day. We also do work for mining companies as well though, so... On occasion I have to fly out to mines and uh, do some stuff there, take some photos there for the work that we're doing. Let's um, flip the normals on this. I'm going to throw down a normal modifier. You see I've got flip normals already selected. I'm also going to unify the normals on that. And I'm going to collapse my stack again. And again, I just collapse my stack because um, if you don't do that and you do an export into FBX, sometimes you can have problems with the FBX file. So, so let's re-export that model again. Feature column, that'll do. Got the light and it's shining through. 
and let's re-import it again into the Unreal Engine. Open up our asset and now we have our normal placing the correct way. Alright, let's um, create our normal map and our occlusion map for this uh, asset. And to do that we're going to jump into Gnarled. I'm going to change my preferences here from Z axes up to Y axes up. And I'm going to load up the color map for that um, column. Which is this one here. And because I want to see what it's going to look like on my actual object, I'm going to load in the mesh we exported. This is again another reason why I really like using Nulled. I can actually load in the mesh so I can see exactly what the, um, the normal map is going to look like on the asset I'm creating it for. Alright, so we have uh, our color map loaded up into Nulled. Let's start playing with our normal map here. And again, I'm going to start by um, pulling back on the extra large detail. You're generally you're not going to get much out of that on most textures, so I pull that back. Uh, same with the large detail, you're not really going to get a lot of out of that either. So I, I pull that back, but just pull it up a little bit. And then we start working uh, with our medium and fine. And again, I'm doing a stair-stepping thing here. So none, a little bit, a little bit more. And it's basically the extra fine detail that's really the one that we want to look at. And our intensity itself. Again, try and avoid going too high on your intensity. If you look at the model here, you can see it better. You're going to start. <coughs> Pardon me. It's less obvious on this model, but <coughs> with a lot of models, you'll notice. <coughs> if you go too high, you're going to start getting like a, a plastic wrap look, look to your model. Pardon me for a second, guys. If you go too high on your normal map, it'll start. Your, your model's going to start looking like it's covered in plastic wrap. So we're not going to pull it up too high. We want to pull it in enough just to bring in a bit of detail of the column. And again, I'm looking at the column here while I'm doing this. I'm not looking at my normal map. And I think about 120% should be fine on that. We'll go to 125. Once you're happy with the way your normal map looks, make sure you update the integrator here. And that will create your height map, which we will save out, but we probably won't use. I always like to save the height map out because it can be really useful to use in to do parallax mapping in Unreal. Our normal map, it's a, it creates a derivative of ambient occlusion, concavity and convexity. Um, we're going to save out the normal map, the height map, the ambient occlusion map, and the um, convexity map. Now with my ambient occlusion map, I'm just going to pull up a little bit here on um, my scaling just to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to make sure I set my path here to that folder we created for the, um, for the model which is feature column. Again, I keep everything nice and organized that way. And let's um, make sure in our exports, we're exporting our height, our normal, our ambient occlusion, and our convexity. And export. All right, let's jump back into Unreal. Let's uh, import those texture maps we just exported from Null. So we want our normal map and our ambient occlusion map. Again, we're not going to be using the height map, but I like to have it there just in case I do want to do any parallax mapping. And the convexity can be used for um, metallic and roughness, but we probably won't do that here either. But having it there is always handy, just in case we change our mind. Let's open up the material that was created for that column. Again, I'm just going to control C on that uh, texture sample and control V twice to throw down two more texture samples. We're going to select our normal map and right click and use current texture. 
And on the bottom one, we're going to select the ambient occlusion and again use current texture. Pipe our normal map into our normal channel and our ambient occlusion into our ambient occlusion. Make sure we save our material. And jump back into our column here. Now we have to check that the color is actually correct. It won't affect our normal map or our ambient occlusion. Um, we're just going to make sure that we match that red color to the um, banister railing. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to just to pull that column into our level. And we can check it this way. And I'm thinking um, the red to the base of the column and to the top of the column is correct. Still a bit yellow in the middle though. And I'm, I'm comparing that column color to this banister here. And remember, because we want to make sure that uh, all of our assets uh, are consistent and look like they match and, and fit together. So let's jump back into Photoshop. I'm going to uh, Select the middle part of this column here, Control C to make a copy, and I'm going to paste in place that uh, copy we just made. I'm going to jump back into my uh, color balance. I'm going to pull in a bit more red again. Pull out a bit on the yellow. And I'm going to do that for. Um, for shadows, midtones, and highlights. Okay, now what that's done is it's just reddened up the center as opposed to the way it was yellow here. It's made it redder. What I'm going to do now is use my eraser brush with a really soft edge, a large brush with a soft edge. I'm just going to grab my uh, Wacom pen here and feather out the uh, edges of that. You can use your mouse, it's just uh, you have to be more careful with the mouse, but don't feel that you need to buy a Wacom tablet because the mouse will work just as well. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all and do a uh, Control Shift and C to copy and Control V to paste. So now we have a copy of that. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make some adjustments to the hue and saturation. I'm going to pull back on the saturation a little bit. So it's not quite so um, coloured. Again, if we go back to our original, you can see the saturate. I've just desaturated the uh, texture a little bit. We're going to um, save this again as that PNG colour texture that we did before. Uh, feature column colour, that one there. Yes, I want to overwrite. I have my file open in Photoshop here in case I want to change anything, so make sure you don't close your Photoshop down. Jump back into uh, Unreal and re-import that color texture. And I'm just pulling back a little bit here so I can get more of an overall look at it all. Uh, I think we need to still bring in a little bit more Color's not bad. We're getting more of a, a match to the uh, urns that we're using up here in the colouring, which is fine. It doesn't have to be an exact match to the um, to the red we're using for the railing, but I still think bringing in a little bit more red would probably work well. So back into Photoshop, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna do a colour adjustment, colour balance, and pull in just a bit more red. Take out a little bit of the yellow. We're going to do that on mid-tone shadows and highlights. All 
Alright, let's save our file again. And jump back into Unreal. And re-import that colour texture again. And that's better. We're getting a better match now between the red of the, of the railings and the um, urn and the column. Now again, remember this column is using a, quite a small texture. It's only 128 pixels wide by 512 pixels high. Um, which we can get away with here. Um, you could probably use a, a higher resolution texture though. We're never really going to see it too close up. We're doing a cinematic where we're flying through the building. Uh, if you were making this though to actually create a game engine, I would suggest you go higher. I'd, I'd probably do at least 512 by 1024. Um, but for what we want, this should work okay. It's basically just making sure we got the color match between these two and that looks okay. Just gonna open up my um, asset here again and check it. And that's all right. And you'll notice it's just two front pieces. So basically we're gonna have a, it's, it's gonna go in the corner between a wall going that way and a wall going that way. So we're only ever gonna see the front two sides, which is why I didn't create the other two at the back. It's just going to be wasted polygons. There's, this column is never sitting in the middle of a room. It's only going to ever be sitting in the corner. So remember with a game engine, you want to try and reduce the poly count and memory count as much as you can. So that'll work for us. We do want to make sure that we, um, that we are getting ourselves nice and organized here in Unreal so that when we come to rebuild the building, everything will be easy to find and easy to place. So what we're going to do here is uh, just rename a couple of our textures. I'm calling this one feature column, not color, but normal. And this one's feature column occlusion. We actually call it AO for ambient occlusion. That's just the naming that I'm using while I'm working in the Unreal Engine. Let's select uh, our textures and move them into our textures folder here. So basically I have uh, folders for my models, for my textures and for my materials. Let's move the uh, textures into the textures folder. Move here. And the normal map. And the color map. Here we have our material, which I always put underscore MAT for material. And we'll move that into our materials folder here. Again, keeping everything nice and organized. 